So in the last two videos, we talked about the product rule, which all we did was multiply. That's all we did. Multiply, multiply, multiply. We counted how many options, then we multiplied them all together, the end. Let's mix this thing up a little bit. This is going to call it the sum rule, which is addition. Now with product rule, there was an and involved, but the sum rule is about or. Okay. So, you know, how many ways can I do this or do this? Now, or would mean that we're adding instead of multiplying. Now be aware, usually we end up using a combination of both the product rule and the sum rule. So we're going to show you some examples. U.S. Congress. There are 100 senators and 435 members of the House of Representatives. These two bodies combined constitute what's called the U.S. Congress. So let's say we want to send a delegation to see the president. How many ways can a delegation be picked if it consists of one senator and one representative? So that's two spots, right? The first spot represents a senator. The second one represents a representative. Well, how many, how many options do I have for senators? I mean, I guess in one. So how big is this group of senators? There's a hundred. I can choose from a hundred senators. So I have a hundred options for a senator. I'm only sending one, but I have a hundred to choose from. What about representative members? Well, I'm only choosing one, but there's 435 to choose from. Now, and means multiplication. So there ends up being about 43,500 possible ways to pick a delegation of one senator and one representative. But part B, if I'm going to send a delegation, <laughs> And it could be of one member of the Senate or one member of the House. Well, again, we have two slots, Senate, Representative. I have 100 senators to pick from. I have 435 House of Representatives to pick from. But it's an or. That's only 535 options. Now, let me put or into perspective for you, okay? If you have four pets and I ask you to bring only one of your pets to class, how many options do you have? What's available to you? There's only four pets. You can only pick one. Okay. Um, what if you are in a classroom and an actual real classroom, go figure. And uh, the teacher's busy, so they say, hey, you pick up the phone, you answer. So you answer the phone. And it's the front desk person, and the front desk person says, hey, would you send a student to the office? And you're like, which one? And they're like, just any student is fine. Just one, just send one student. And you say, okay, and you hang up. And you look in the classroom, and there are 32 students. Right? Well, how many options do you have? You're sending only one, but there's 32 students, right? Or let's even kick it up a notch. And I'm not going to get into the gender thing. I'm just going to go ahead and keep things basic at this point. But let's say that you're asked, okay, let's say that there's 10 boys in a class and 20 girls in the, in the same class. There's 30 students total, okay? So you have 20 boys, sorry, 10 boys and 20 girls. Okay. And the front desk person says, Hey, send me either a boy or a girl to the front desk, either a boy or a girl. Well, that's, that's, there's 10 boys and there's 20 girls. So you have 30 options, right? There, it's, it's essentially asking the same question again. If, if the, if the front presence desk person says, send me a boy or a girl, it's like, um, bro, it's with the whole classroom is essentially made of so you, you're pretty much asking me to just send a student and they're like yeah I guess so right so that's what the or is about the or is, is in a way inclusive right it's, it's actually saying hey you know there's more to consider in your options problem eight five letter codes so I didn't originally I was going to call this five letter words but then some of you are like well that's not a word well you're not thinking like like crypto security and and 
in computers. Computers necessarily don't pick words as a form of communication, they pick codes, okay? So what we call a word, a computer would call a code because it doesn't matter what it is. So how many five letter words either start with a D or do not have the letter D? Five letter words. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now let me kind of give you a little bit of a hint here. You're gonna to wanna to read a problem multiple times to make sure you understand what it's asking for. How many five letter words either start with a D or do not have the letter D? They start with a D or do not have the letter D. It didn't say and. So it's not like it doesn't start with a D or it doesn't and it doesn't have letter D. It's it's or. Okay. And now I don't want you to make a list of words, right? Because these are computer words. Okay, as far as the computer is concerned, uh, this is a word. Okay. So when you see an or, make like a little wall. Okay. Because there's gonna be two parts of this. There's gonna be this type of a word, or it's gonna be this type of a word. So let's ignore that part of the problem. Okay, so they start with D. Well, how many options is that? So for this part, how many options do I have? It must start with D. It must, it must. How many options is that? That's one. What is the option? D. Okay. Um, what about the other options? Well, how many letters are in alphabet? Can I, can I use D again? Is repetition allowed? Well, they didn't say otherwise, and it's a computer, so most likely, yeah, we can use we can not only use D again, but we can actually use it multiple times if we want. So there's repetition allowed. Okay. This or means plus. So now I've got to make another five-letter word. Well, I should say five slots. Okay. Now for this side, it does not have the letter D at all. At all. So you know there's 26 letters, right? That includes D. Well, now we got to take that out. So there's 25 options. And I'm going to assume repetition is allowed. This is a pretty big thing. This is a pretty big number we're going to get if you put it as a calculator. Now, this is the idea of crypto security. So the more um, options you have and the more slots you have, the more possible outcomes there are, the harder it is to hack. So that's why when you make little dinky passwords, or very predictable ones for that matter, it's, it's kind of easy to hack into your stuff. So consider making longer ones. Consider using more options. Okay. DNA. How many DNA chains? Don't forget that there's four uh, bases. It's T, C, A, and G. Those are your options for DNA bases. How many DNA chains of length three have no C's at all or have no T's in the first position? Okay, so again, here's your OR, right? There's this left part of it. So I want length three. One, two, three. No C's at all. That leaves me three options. And I can use it. In, it didn't say anything about repetition, so I'm going to assume that I can repeat. Okay. Now, this or. Or have no T's in the first position. So it's length three. We're back to this. Is, this problem restarts again. Uh, no T's in the first position. So that means I can't have a T in the first position. Is one, two, three options. This is the first position, by the way. But what about the second and third positions? It didn't say anything about I can't use a T. So that means we're back to four possible outcomes for each of those. That looks like uh, 75 possible ways to do that. Okay. Problem 10. A man has six different suits. And how many ways can you choose a suit jacket and a pair of suit pants? So what's interesting about this problem, we don't see that or, right? Um, so don't be expecting a plus. Let's read it again. A man has six different suits, and how many ways can you choose a suit jacket and? Oh, and. Okay, so check it out. I'm making this, 
and this spot represents the jacket. This spot represents the pants. How many options do I have for the jacket? Well, there's six suits and each suit has a jacket and a pant. So I have six options for the jacket and I have six options for the pants and that's 36. So how does it apply in your regular normal everyday lives folks? Well, if you have six different outfits, then you actually have 36 different outfits. Ah, snap. So instead of you being limited to just one week of clothing that's unique, you could actually have 36 days, right? You could have like four or five weeks of unique combinations, quote unquote, of apparel. Fascinating. So the only math we've really done in the last three pages is addition and multiplication. Uh, but we're not really using our fingers, right? And we're not really writing down all the possible outcomes because some of these are just really overwhelming, like the telephone numbers. That's We didn't even put in a calculator. Okay, your calculator might not even be able to handle that. So when we say, talk about counting, we're talking about predicting possibilities. Okay. Uh, but what does that look like? Like what kind of, what are the setups look like? Like what do we do to set things up in the show? Uh, how to actually count?